Okay, I'm going to start off by doing this question wrong, but showing you that sometimes our instincts to use SAT strategies might not always work as we want, right? They're, I always push them. You've seen my other videos. I'm always about using the strategy instead of doing algebra. I look at this and I sense bad algebra. So my instinct is, well, I got this A, I've got this B. The B is what seems to matter. I could probably get rid of X. It doesn't seem to matter. So let me arithmetize. Let me put that over here. Right, so I would say, let's just pretend for a second that x is 1, and let's see what happens with this question, right? So that would become 4 times 1 is 4 plus 4. a times 1 is a. And, oof, we're going to run out of space. 1 squared is 1 plus 4, right? So that's 8 a minus 1 uh, plus 3, and that's equal to bx, right? It says right here, so that we said x is 1, so that's just b. And I'm going to get something kind of annoying, where 8a minus 5 is equal to b. And that's a problem, because in order for me to solve for b, I need to know what a is. But I've used the only equation I was given. And I can't have one equation with two variables and solve. That's just not possible in math. Now, that didn't take me very long to do. And that's why I still think that if we use the strategies as our default, we, let's do it this way, we can still, at least if we fail, we fail quickly, right? So we don't waste a lot of time. And here's the other thing is I'm still going to use the strategy to get this right. I tried arithmetizing because I got confused by the algebra and it didn't work. But I'm still confused by the algebra. And so that's where this other strategy that comes up in, in all sorts of places. Get back to basics. What does that strategy mean? One way I tend to phrase it with my students is if you look at a question, ask yourself, if I were writing a math textbook, what chapter would I put this question in? What would be the title of the chapter that this question would probably be in? Right? So I look at this and I'm like, okay, well, I see there's that, those two parentheses things. That's it's about foiling, right? Factoring and foiling. I see a squared. So I'd probably put this in the factor foil chapter. And the reason that's an important thing is that's probably, that's your brain telling you what you should do, right? What you see, what your brain thinks about is a good place to start because these SAT questions, there aren't that many mathematical algebraic ways to solve things. So if you see something, it's probably the right thing to do. Even if you're not sure why, just do it. So here's a case where I'd be like, all right, this seems like, it reminds me of factoring and foiling. I'm going to do that and see what happens. So let's, let's foil these two pieces here. So first outer, inner, last, right? So 4x times ax, that's going to be 4ax squared. The outer terms, 4x times negative 1 is negative 4x. The inner terms, is going to be 4ax. And the last terms are going to be plus, oops, sorry, minus 4. And then we still have this other piece, right? So minus x squared plus 4. And it says that that is equivalent to bx. So let's finish out our equation by writing that. OK. We foiled. What should we do next? Well, if this were just a normal algebra question, I'd probably combine like terms. So I should probably combine like terms here as well. So I've got um, some terms I'd like to combine. Here's this negative 4 and this positive 4. Well, those cancel. Nice. These other terms are kind of weird, right? I have an x squared and an x squared, but I got that a there as well. That's kind of annoying. And same thing here. I've got an x and an x, but one has this a. So that's going to be a problem. Let's group them together anyway. Let's do 4 a x squared minus x squared minus, or let's do plus 4ax minus 4x equals bx. What do you notice? Well, I notice that this right side is really simple, and this left side is really complex. One of the differences between the left side and the right side is that the left side has some x squareds 
and the right side does not. So what's going on? This is, where, this is the hardest part of this question right here. Well, I don't know what A is, but it must be something that makes those x squareds disappear. Right? They must cancel out because there's no x squared on the other side. So I need to have it so that they make zero, so that the x squareds disappear. Right? We see them here now, but if I were to try to simplify this any further, I would eventually get to bx, and the bx doesn't have any x squared, so there must be like a zero x squared that's kind of hidden there. Right? We got rid of it, so we ignored it, but it's kind of there. So what does that mean? Now we can kind of start to build a second equation, and that's what the key of this question is, is there's really two equations, the one they gave us, which we've been working with, and a second equation, which we kind of have to use the x's to figure out. And this is why arithmetizing didn't work, because arithmetizing got rid of the x's, but we need them to understand what's happening. So we need to understand that 4ax squared minus x squared is equal to 0x squared. The way that combining like terms works is the x squared terms and the x terms, they're different kinds of things. They can't mix, at least not easily. And so we're going to ignore the x's for a second because the b is involved in those, but only the a is involved in the x squared. So I can figure out what a is using this little mini equation I just made. And if you want, you can add x squared to both sides. So we get 4ax squared is equal to x squared. Because of just the normal rules here, that the x's are going to cancel, x squareds are going to cancel, what do we have? We have a 1 left over because it's 1x squared now. And so 4a is equal to 1. So a is equal to 1 fourth. Why is that helpful? Well, and now let's work on the b's. Let's get a new color here. It's a mess, this question. So the b also has some similar terms that we can make a new equation with, right? We have this 4ax and this minus 4x terms that both have just 1x, no x squared, just regular old x. So we can kind of do what we just did and make a new equation. 4ax minus 4x is equal to bx. And now we've got some help because we figured out that a is 1 fourth. So we can make a substitution and say, okay, 4 times 1 fourth x minus 4x is equal to bx. 4 times a fourth is 1. 1x one minus 4x is equal to bx. And now I can combine these like terms because they both have just numbers. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3x is equal to bx. So that's a long way of saying that that negative 3 has to be b. That's the answer we got. That's an answer up here. And that is the answer. This is rough. This is really hard. So what do you do if you encounter a question like this? Well, I stand by what I did originally. You arithmetize, right? It's hard algebra. It's confusing. So you try the thing that we normally do when we have confusing variables, and the variables seem to not matter, right? The x doesn't seem to play into this, this question, so I would want to get rid of it. But doing so doesn't get rid of the, the real problem, which is that I don't know what a is either. And A seems like it matters, right? B and A seem related. So I can't figure out B unless I know A, and I can't make up a random number for A because that's going to determine what my value is for B. So i got to do this whole other thing. But if you tried the arithmetize and it didn't work, remember, just guess something. You've got a 1 in 4 chance of getting this right. This is a lot of work for number 16. I wouldn't want you to waste 5 minutes on this especially if you're confused and all the things I just did don't make a whole lot of sense. Like, pick your favorite letter, move on, and if you have time, come back and play with it. But don't 
don't feel like you need to get these 10 points before you can move on to the next 10 points in the next question. That's a bad way of thinking about the SAT. This is not about like beating the levels of a video game where you have to beat the previous question to go on to the next question. This is not how that works. This is a grab as many points as you can kind of situation. So if you can't grab these because it's a slippery question, move on to the next thing where you got a better grip. That is the key here. And also, if you are advanced and you're trying to figure out those last few ways to get the last few points, here's a case where the SAT is doing stuff like this more often. They like these questions where you need to use the structure of the equation to solve, right? You need to say, oh, all these terms of x squared, so these terms are all related. All these terms have x's, so these terms are related. They're doing that more often, and they're hard because it requires a lot of you know, competence with algebra and comfort with the way that equations are built and the steps that you can and cannot do. So maybe bookmark this one and, and see if, you, if it comes up again in another practice test. I think it will, but it's really hard. So if you've got, you know, if you've still got plenty of other points to go before you have to worry about this stuff, then move on, get those other points, come back to this in a couple weeks when this is all that's, all that's left.